Meet Arnold. I love to wake him up when he's sleeping so sweetly. Get up, lazy butt! I have something for you, Arnold. You now have just 24 hours to live. I think you should Google what to do in such a situation. Yeah. First, clear your browser history. And here are the top three answers to this burning question. How would you spend the last day of your life with loved ones? I think for you, Arnold, this probably ain't the right answer. The second option is to gorge yourself on junk food. Well, you already do that every day. And finally, number three, spend the day at the ocean with a loved one. Ooh, it just got interesting. Arnold, are you really going to do what you've been dreaming of all your life? Whoopsie daisy, somebody ran out of gas and money. Money, money, money. Great idea! You can get a loan and really live it up on your last day. Get the maximum. You'll feel like the richest dude on the planet. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, makes enough money to buy a new Tesla Model S every 50 seconds. You're rich now, Arnold. You can rent your own plane and fly anywhere you want. What are you up to? Wow, you're gonna take Tagaya from her boyfriend and take her on a trip with you. Arnold, you're my hero. Ah, if only we could turn back time and make this moment really last. What if I told you it's possible to keep the day from ending? You need to overtake the sun. To do this, we gotta fly west along the equator at a speed of 1,667 kilometers per hour. If you can fly at that speed, the day will never end. Regrettably, this won't affect your life timer in the slightest. It's your last few seconds, Arnold. Arnold, that's just your style. Yes, today is definitely not your day. You look like crap. But it was worth it. You cheered up a lot of people. Wait, are you in a coma? Looking at you, you'd think you're dead, but you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan. And you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. People can be in a coma from a few days to a dozen years. Edward Obara fell into a coma at the age of 16 and spent 42 years this way. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex oh. mechanisms. The degree of a coma is determined by the Glasgow Coma Scale, where 15 points is clear consciousness and three points is brain death. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine. Wake up, uh -huh. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie. Mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century. And we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax, 
At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often accused others of heresy in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you can endure any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic. Hmm, it's a really nice place and quite suspiciously familiar. Holy crap, Polly, it's Jason Voorhees. Jason is a seven foot tall madman with a tremendous craving for violence. Trying to run away or hide is useless. He has an inexplicable ability to suddenly appear behind his victim. Attack is the best form of defense. Set a trap for him. After being struck by lightning, Jason became super resistant to damage, but he still has no chance against a saw. Good lord, Arnold, you're like a monkey with a hand grenade. That looks really bad. You need immediate hospitalization. You're not going to make it to the hospital. Your heart could stop. You need an emergency blood transfusion to maintain pressure in your circulatory system. During the Vietnam War, coconut IVs were sometimes used to treat the wounded. Amazingly, coconut water is quite similar to human blood plasma. So what do we have? Cola. Okay, let's get to work. But first, you need to get rid of all the gas. If the gas contained in the drink gets inside your blood vessels, it'll literally tear you apart from the inside. Cola contains sugar, glucose. This is a perfect source of fast energy and allows you to really perk up. It seems to have worked. The cola has taken root in your body. But your appearance has changed just a little, buddy. Even your hair has changed color. But on the other hand, you'll be a most welcome guest at any children's party. With so much caffeine in the cola running through your veins, you only have to sleep once every three days. Now, you have much more time than regular people. After all, even professional athletes drink cola for a quick dose of energy. And you can always get a refill at the nearest supermarket. No, stop, you kamikaze nutball. Just one single Mentos could turn you into a surface-to-air missile. Don't worry, it won't ruin your day. Cola even helps combat mild depression. But to be honest, Arnold, cola in your blood is actually deadly. What you reading? Hmm. One, he might have a scary mask on his face. Uh, Arnie, are you sure you really want to be reading this in a secluded park? The second sign of a maniac is a knife or other weapon in their hands. Are you sure you really want to know the third sign? The maniac has huge silicone... Wait, that's not it. He always attacks without warning! Fight for your life, Arnold! Try somehow to divert the maniac's attention and slip away. Never mind. You should run to a public place and get people's attention. 
Why is no one responding? Psychologists advise shouting fire instead of help. This way, people will notice you faster. Sure, calling the police is a great idea. Now, 48 hours after your death, they'll really definitely start looking for you. Just kidding. Wait until they arrive. Also, gym time is over. Looks like you were able to get away. But don't rush to rejoice just yet. Some maniacs hunt their victims for months and can predict exactly where they'll go next. By the way, dark alleys are a bad place to try and hide. It looks like nothing is gonna help you. Except, well, maybe that. Ingratiate yourself with the maniac. Motives of maniacs can be different. Some want power, others suffer from delusions, and some consider themselves purifiers of society. But absolutely all of them are lonely and deeply hurt people. If you treat the maniac well, then there's a chance you might survive. Yes, you'll have to put up with a few really scary things and listen to his crazy ideas. But someday it will end. The main thing is, never show your true emotions. Remember, salvation will come. Then it remains only to be explained to the police why the maniac considers you his best friend. Oh no. Whoops! We have a small problem. Arnold, don't be scared, but you are buried alive! Just like Rodrigo Cortez. <laughs> uh, stop yelling already. Screaming increases panic, heart, and accordingly the amount of air you use. And you have a maximum of two hours of breathing in your coffin until you run out of oxygen. Arnold, your phone! You're only two meters deep. Hooray! There's one line of connection. Call your loved ones. They'll save you. But this isn't certain because for them, you're dead. They'll probably think your call is someone's stupid hmm. prank. Try to connect to the internet. Your post will be seen for sure, but only after they like a cat in a funny suit, a new post by Ariana Grande, and a funny-shaped potato. I have it. Geotag posts get 79% more engagement, and a post that says oil was found will 100% attract the attention of Donald Trump. In critical situations, a person's animal instincts wake up. Well, I expected that it would wake up in you. Arnold, when lacking oxygen, people often see hallucinations. Maybe we can Google what to do. Don't hammer a nail in your life like it's a coffin lid. Get out of your comfort zone. There's no way. Oh, kill Bill too. Do it like Uma Thurman. You need to punch a hole in the lid. Be strong in spirit. Collect all your anger like Naruto. Ooh, did it hurt? You need to somehow break the lid. Look if you have anything in your pockets. Ew, Arnold, what is that? Oh, give me a break. You won't even need them outside the coffin. Ooh, this will do. Break through. Hit. It's like you're trying to escape from fascists or from the whining songs of Billie Eilish. You did it. Now you have to tamp all the dirt into the coffin to clear your way out. You have to lift your shirt so that it can be tied over your head. This is so that you don't suffocate from dirt falling on your head. Arnold. 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 Wake up. Hallucinations again. It's way easier for a person to get from out of a dap if it's equal or less than their height. Arnold, where are you going? Wow, I didn't think aliens really existed. These guys are going to do something really useful with your body. Your body consists of 70% water, 24% organic matter, and 6% inorganic substances. In a cucumber, there's also a lot of water, about 85 to 90%. So technically, you're a very emotional cucumber. From the remaining 6% of inorganic elements, many useful things can be created. In your body, there's enough iron to make a nail 6 centimeters long. Your body also can contains enough copper to make a pair of headphones. And all of this while you still remain alive. You can even remove most of your internal organs and still go on living. The human body seems fragile, but you can live even without your stomach, spleen, 75% of your liver, 80% of your intestines, one kidney, one lung, and almost every organ located in your pelvis and your inguinal cavity. Of course, you'll hardly be like a cucumber, but it won't kill you. And you will have those free headphones of somewhat dubious quality. But these are all useless things. 
In fact, the composition of your body includes carbon, hydrogen, sodium, and oxygen. All these chemical elements are also part of dynamite. The hidden explosive power of the human body is equal to 175 grams of TNT. In fact, the strength of the explosion will be in direct proportion to how much you like salty foods during your life. Are you dreaming of being Spider-Man? That's cool and all, but just don't tell me you want to get bitten by the spider. It's a black widow. The poison of this spider is 15 times stronger than the poison of a rattlesnake. It's good that they don't attack people first or you'd be sorry. Wait, Arnold, did you swallow the spider? The path to the stomach through the esophagus is like a steep water slide with a pool of hydrochloric acid at the bottom, and that acid will easily neutralize the spider's venom. If you wash the spider down with a glass of water, it'll reach the stomach in just two seconds. But without any liquid, its fall will take nine seconds, and it has lots of time to bite you. Get ready! Black Widow Venom contains the neurotoxin alpha latrotoxin. When you're bitten, this neurotoxin attaches to the receptors of nerve cells and causes an influx of calcium there. And this releases hormones that cause convulsions and paralysis. Arnold, you did want superpowers, didn't you? Now your abs can stand even a sledgehammer. And what about a four-hour erection? or eyes that protrude from their sockets. Somehow, I think you look more like a supervillain, Arnold. What is it, Arnie? Do you regret eating the spider? Let's take advantage of the hallucinations and look at some other options. Here's Arnold. He was bitten by a six-eyed sand spider. Its venom causes internal bleeding and tissue necrosis. And there's no antidote. And here's the victim of a bite from the world's most poisonous spider. According to the Guinness Book of Records, the Brazilian wandering spider. Its bite in most cases leads to cardiac arrest. But back to our reality. Fortunately, only 5% of adults die from black widow venom. Yeah. After 12 to 48 hours of the most terrible torment, the effect of the poison stops. Hey. Hey. Arnold, no, stop! That's just an innocent little house spider. It's not poisonous at all. Oh. Let's play a really popular game everybody knows. The floor is lava, but here it's real lava. Cool, right? This is what an ordinary children's game can lead to. Global catastrophe. Don't touch the floor, Arnie. The temperature of lava can reach 1,200 degrees Celsius. You can move around using any items you see. But remember, the chair will burn up in just three seconds, your bed will disappear in five, and your TV will melt faster than a single TV commercial. Come up onto the roof. Hey, don't fall off. If you fall into the lava, you'll get a serious burn that'll destroy all your nerve endings and boil your subcutaneous fat. But on the bright side, this does mean you won't even have time to feel how the lava burns you all the way to the bone. Get it together, man. Oh no, you idiot! Metal constructions will always heat up the fastest, you dimwit. But take it easy. Even if you fall, you won't drown. Lava is not as liquid as it seems. Counterintuitively, its density is even higher than that of concrete. As for walking on lava, you simply need special asbestos boots just like geologists use. Wow, it's getting hot! At this temperature, all the water in the oceans will boil and turn into a ginormous pod of fish soup. It's time to save the world's last fish. But really, the worst thing is not the hot lava, but what happens when it cools down? As it loses temperature, lava creates acid clouds of steam and gas, and they contain teeny tiny glass particles that are dangerous to humans. But don't worry, soon the whole world will turn into the Hawaiian Islands. I will now stop your heart for one nanosecond. Calm down, chucklehead. This is all for the sake of science. 
The heart is a pump that makes blood move all around the body at a speed of about 25 miles or 40 kilometers per hour. The path which the blood travels through is more than 100,000 kilometers long. And if all these vessels were laid out in a single line, they would wrap around the globe twice. <laughs> Three, two, one, stop. <laughs> Arnold, did you pee your pants? It takes 0.4 seconds for the heart to contract and the same to rest. If you add up all the pauses in an average person's life, it turns out that the heart is resting for more than 20 years. Therefore, no one will notice a little pause for just a single nanosecond. But I already figured out how to fix it. Look closely. The heart resembles a two-story house. There are two rooms at the top called the right and left atria and below the ventricles. In its normal mode, the blood from the atrium is pushed into the ventricle with such pressure that the blood could hypothetically shoot out for more than 9 meters or almost 30 feet. Then the ventricle pushes blood into the lungs or the aorta, and life goes on as usual. But if the ventricle stops for at least 0.7 seconds, when all the other parts of the heart are still working, then boom! The amount of blood going through doubles, and it's torn to shreds. Another evening session of degradation watching mm. TV. So what do we have here? Elon Musk has launched a new rocket into space. And space has launched a meteor back at Elon Musk. Arnold, relax. You don't even know what a meteor is. A meteor is a large celestial body of cosmic origin. Their mass ranges from a few grams to thousands of tons. And don't be scared. There's only one case of a meteor strike hitting a person in history in 1954. And even then, it just hit somebody in their leg. It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet. And he's just bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever. And have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent! We'll pick an outfit for you. So this one is a no. Definitely not this one. Yee! No, not that one. Now this one. This is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of 6 kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're going to have to fly manually and become a hero. You need to get out of here, fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly. Your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two... Oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go! Are you surprised you're the only passenger on board? This Boeing 767 belongs to the most dangerous airline in the world. Right after the company was founded in 2003, one of its aircraft went off the runway during landing. Passengers received many injuries, but fortunately all survived. Then, again, after some time, one of its planes disappeared from radar half an hour before landing. After two days of searching, it was found, crashed into a mountain, and out of 104 people on board, only microbes survived. Rule number one on a plane, always buckle up. Air density is constantly changing. Imagine this, it's summer. 
you're flying over a field with a warm breeze blowing up at the plane. Then suddenly the field ends and you start flying over a cold lake. The warm winds suddenly stop influencing the plane and you start going wee! Turbulence will shake the plane and can knock it down by three meters. And all of this is happening at a speed of 800 kilometers an hour. And if you're not buckled up during a sudden 2G load, you're a goner. Every single collision with your seat or the plane will break your ribs, twist your arms, break your skull, and then, holy shit, rarefied gas which flies out of the engine attracts lightning more strongly than anything on land. But the most interesting thing is that large planes often create lightning themselves. From the tail, an electrical discharge of hundreds of thousands of amps extends into the clouds, and from the nose into the ground. Lightning can break the windshield and disable all the electronics on board. Hold on, Arnold. Ladies, you have to work the stumble on your hands. Oh, my God, Arnold. If you touch the wheelchair one last time at your funeral... Don't ask how he ended up in a Tesla tied to a Falcon 9 rocket. And don't ask why. Just please don't ask. Well, are you ready, Arnie? I'm starting the countdown. Remember, to leave the Earth, the rocket should reach escape velocity speed of 25,000 miles per hour, or 11.2 kilometers a second. Your body will start to feel crazy heavy. It will aggravate your blood circulation in cerebral vessels. Then your vision will become blurred and perhaps completely lost. Hang in there, Arnold. If you lose consciousness, you won't be able to put your spacesuit on. And without your spacesuit, at an altitude of 19 kilometers, the tissues in your feeble body will swell, and all the liquids, such as snot and tears, will start to boil. If I were you, I'd hurry up. Oh, yes. I forgot to warn you that a spacesuit for spacewalks weighs about 130 kilograms. In conditions like Earth's gravity, it will simply crush your weak little chicken body. So you'll have to put it on after you're already in orbit. But take it easy, Arnie. If you move too quickly, there's a chance you'll burn up from the inside. As in space, the body's thermoregulatory mechanisms sometimes fail. Sweat evaporates poorly in space, and this prevents cooling of the body. Therefore, during intense activity, your temperature can rise above 40 degrees Celsius. Oh, hell, Arnold, you fainted after all. Oh, has the duck cheered you up? Well, I have bad news for you. Because of the collision, the navigation equipment has been damaged and the rocket's off course. The command center's trying to get you back onto the Martian trajectory, but unfortunately, one stage of the Falcon 9 is damaged, and most likely, in five hours, you're going to crash into the moon. What the hell, Arnold? Did you just pee your pants? In the earliest spacesuits, NASA tried to make a system for disposing of waste, but in the end, modern astronauts just use good old diapers, which you certainly don't have, do you, Arnold? Well, I certainly hope you didn't eat breakfast today, because right in front of you, there's a small cloud of space junk, and just behind it, a mini meteoroid. It seems it's time to say goodbye. I'm going to miss you, Arnold. What the hell, Arnold? Arnold! Are you alive or what? Oh no, you've somehow discovered Elon Musk's master plan for galactic conquest, and now he's gonna choose the worst punishment for you. Everything's fine, Arnie. First, you need to figure out what's wrong. So get out of the cabin. Get out! Yes, there are three cables holding your elevator up, and the problem clearly does not lie with them. Even one single cable is strong enough to support the weight of four cows, three polar bears, or one hippopotamus. The probability of all three cables simultaneously breaking is practically zero. It seems we're having problems with a motor. Keep back, Arnold, otherwise you'll catch on fire. Metal cables with a counterweight attached are connected to the cabin of your elevator. When the motor activates, the elevator goes up or down. It looks like your cabin's already being held by the first brake. This brake is inside the engine and immediately clamps down on the cable at the slightest sign of breakage. Don't panic, Arnie. We have one more brake, the safety brake, over there under the cabin. If the speed of the elevator increases, the safety brake clamps down and the elevator stops. The danger is past. Arnold, I think you've been jinxed. I have an idea. Get ready to fall. Arnold, you're undermining the reputation of our scientific channel. Just because you're weightless doesn't mean you can escape by jumping. If instead of you there was some more athletic person in your place, maybe he could jump. 
But then his head would smash into the roof of the elevator. They say you can lie down on the floor, spreading the force of the impact over your entire body. But alas, this landing won't be so soft. The impact with the bottom, at a speed of more than 60 kilometers per hour, will make nothing but iron wreckage of the elevator. Now, just imagine what it'll do to your body in that same elevator. Did you think I would let you die so easily? Forget baby 94. And that 94 may not be the year of her birth. It might be her weight in kilograms. Let's go home, my friend.